as they line up, it looks like uh, they're starting to get ready. And really quickly, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the field. So in lane now two will be Helen Schlaftenhofen. No lanes, Kyle. No lanes. All right. <laughs> Helen Schlaftenhofen, Nikki Hilt, Gabriella DeBustaford, Corey McGee, Shannon Osika, Jenna Westway, Sarah Vaughn, and Sinclair Johnson. And the Tokyo target that we're going to sit out there is 404.20. And so the pace that we are looking for tonight is 65 flats. And we're going to have those lights on the infield geared towards those times. So we'll have an idea just exactly where they are in regard to that. So if you're curious about how those lights work, it's, for, it's provided to us by light speed pacing. David Hudman is the guy behind All him. He's right. based First out in Florida. Tonight, we have 16 lights around the track set right to the time. So some races are going to have multiple lights for multiple pacers, but this should be pretty straightforward. Yeah, and our rabbit, Leanne Farber, immediately to the front. She's got a, a five meter lead on the field as they're looking to see who's going to be the one to take it behind her. You have Nikki Hiltz on the inside rail and Shannon Osika, Osika behind her. Shannon is one who is never scared to get on the pace and push it. I believe she has a personal best of 401 and she's been known to do it the hard way. Yeah, that 401 came back in 2018 out in Poland. She's been on a tear. Was consistently around that 406 range for about three years and then had that big, big breakthrough in late 2019. So the field comes through 300 meters in 51 seconds. I hope at some point Leanne up front will take a look behind her and just allow them to reattach. Uh, right now, it doesn't seem like Nikki is fully committing to that quick pace. And a lot of that reason is, is because she has already run fast times before and she doesn't necessarily need that Olympic trial or that Olympic standard. And there's just like the little added component that there was that scheduling change uh, in, the last, uh, in the last two days where that USATF announced where where now you can't do the 15 5K double. So, hey, if less women have the standard, then uh, it makes things a little easier for her. Yeah, and you know, I think that the 1500 is an event that is already yeah, extremely competitive. And when you consider some of those women like Ellie and Shelby, who are capable of both doing the 1500 and 5K extremely well, competitive on both obviously the domestic level, but also internationally, that schedule change does potentially throw a wrench into things. Now, I, I do want to bring a little bit of attention to Z Sarah Vaughn, who's leading that chase pack, because she just partnered with a brand new brand. It's called Ann Mother. It was co-founded by Alicia Montano. The brand strives to break barriers that limit a woman's choice to pursue and thrive in both career and motherhood. And so she's someone who's been in the game for a while. It's good to see her getting some, some big time support. And so they came through 700 meters in 202. Sarah has stepped up and Sarah is just a real feel good story. A mother, a realtor. She has just made a career outside of running, but still somehow finds a way to get this done. Mother of four. And Sarah is one who I believe still does need that time. If I am correct, um, you can you can maybe check me on that, but I believe her personal best is just outside the Olympic qualifying mark with 404.5. Uh, yep, that is correct. They're slowly starting to wind it up. They look very, very comfortable. In a small field like this, it's very easy to jostle around and find the position that you want to be in. I'd expect a blistering final 400 meters. Gabriela Safford is all the way in the back, and so if she is the one who has, oh, now there, there it is. If you keep your eye on her, she's about to make her move on the outside. Watch for that kick. Well, after that 3K, you know she's confident in her strength and will have no problem pushing from far outside. She's probably run more Diamond League races than anyone else in this field, so she's used to going out much, much quicker. And I believe we were about 308, 309 with a lap to go. So we're going to see a very, very fast finish here as they approach the 1200 meter mark in about 326. And you see Corey McGee on the outside swinging wide. She's got a 403 personal best. She PR'd uh, in the 1500 four times in 2020. It seems right now with the way that the positions are opened up that everyone is going to have the opportunity if they're feeling good as they hit 200 meters ago in about 341. And Gabrielle Stafford is starting to make a big, big push, but hot on her heels is her teammate Sinclair Johnson. Corey McGee is about two steps behind as Shannon Osika is coming around on the outside, but it's Gabrielle Stafford up front. Sinclair Johnson is still behind her in lane one. We're going to look to see her if she can swing into lane two. But Shannon Osika is making a huge bid from behind. She's not on her screen, but she's coming up, but it's not going to be enough. Gabrielle Stafford looks strong, closes in 409. 
A tactical race as Bowerman goes. 1-2. She looked fantastic that last 400. We're gonna have to find out exactly what the final lap was, but my guess is that it's gonna be in that 60 second range. A hell of a negative split. There's a reason why she's the Canadian record holder in the 1500 indoors and outdoors, the mile indoors and outdoors, the, 1500, the 5K indoors and outdoors. She's on fire. That was really exciting just to see the Bowerman crew line up against some of America's top middle distance runners rather than just doing the time trials, which, again, in a time of COVID was very necessary, very exciting to watch. But we're uh, able to really see what it all means. And Gabrielle Stafford shows that she can do more than just time trials. She can still race. We're getting back. Yeah, it's it just back to rubbing, rubbing shoulders and, and seeing who can get across the finish line first.